today I am at Pihia Honda. Sorry for any wind noise that you hear. Um, it is just crazy windy today. And uh, we are in the campground right now. I'll do a um, quick uh, little uh, video for you guys on Pihia Honda. This is in the Florida Keys. It is very hard to bump. If I turn the camera around, the light's going to be behind me. So it's not going to be quite as good as the shot. But you can see we are basically on the beach. Um, if you just look down, there's a couple little rocks, maybe five feet, and then you have beach. Um, and it's not just the site. It's, there's a whole line of sites. They do have sites on the other side of the, um, the road also um, that are, you know, are not quite as um, beach-esque. Um, but you can tell that they do have a reason for these um, the fencing here so people don't you know, protrude too much onto the beach, um, which also means that you have to be really, really honest with yourself on uh, how large your camper is. So if they say the site is 40 feet long, there's a wall here. It's, it's 40 feet long. Okay, don't bring like a 45 foot camper into a 40 foot side or a 40 foot camper into a 35 foot side. There's just no extra space as you can see. Um, still, because it has that in, um, that really tightens it down a lot. The more concerning um, thing with the Kia Honda, just kind of walking around, is that they have these poles here. There's not a pole on this side, fortunately. Um, so I'm just make that thing a little bit easier. Um, oh, that's kind of nice. They did that on a lot of these sites. You notice the, the pole comes out, this is size 70, by the way, um, all the way on the one side, but it's shorter on the other side. And the reason for that is because you would be backing in this direction. And so they put a little gravel here so you can actually cut the corner. I mean, That'll make backing in a little bit easier, so I'm happy to see that they did that. However, at the same time, the road here is really narrow, and it is nearly a 90 degree turn. So, this site, specifically, um, I, you know, I can't speak about all other sites. Um, every site is a little different. Would actually be pretty difficult to get into. I mean, it wouldn't be impossible. It just would be pretty difficult to get into um, in comparison. At the Curry Hammock um, State Park in comparison, which is very close to this place, um, another uh, um, state park that people compare, it seemed to me like all the sites were more like at 45 degrees. They maybe all were not, but the road was like curved in a like an oval, and then the sites came off kind of like at an angle. There were not really that many sites that were just exactly 90 degrees like this. Um, so it seemed like backing would be easier at the other place. Um, they, the other one, Curry Hammock, has amazing beach also. Um, but the difference between here and Curry Hammock is Curry Hammock has a dune and malgroves between you. They have three beaches here. Um, I'll show you some footage of the three beaches. They have a concession stand. Um, this place is rated as uh, the nicest beach in the Keys, um, and it, it looks awfully nice to me. Um, there is grass on the seashore, um, and there's grass on the seashore at um, Curry Hammock right now also, because I just came from there. And the grass is um, dependent on how much wind there is. Today is an extremely windy day. So there is a whole lot of grass. Um, last week, earlier, there was nowhere near as much grass. I'll pop a little sign up that kind of explains it. Um, the grass is there for all the sea life. You can see uh, all the birds and stuff uh, having a field day. Very natural, they, um, the, you know, one would immediately think, why don't they rake and, and grass? Um, and that's actually not a good thing for the environment. It's actually better to leave it there. Um, but it also means that it's not quite as, um, like I guess, picturesque as you would imagine littering the, the beach line, but like I said, um, it depends on the wind, on how much you have. Sometimes it's not terribly noticeable, but sometimes right now like it is ridiculous. Um, so. Okay, so this is Bahia Honda's second beach. Um, this is right outside the concession stand. They actually have steps coming down from the rock. Um, I don't know if the tide is in or out right now, but it actually gets uh, pretty deep, pretty fast. And as you can see, um, there's not a whole lot of sand, but I mean, it is sand at least, it's really, really nice, not like rocks or anything. Um, so, it seems like the, the beach near the campground has a lot more grass than the uh, sand and everything. Because, um, you know, obviously it was like, like 20 feet wide. Um, but here, on the concession stand, um, there's just the grass up on the rocks, but there's almost no, like, 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 like beach per se. Um, so I'm going to go check out the other one now. So the beach that is not facing the ocean side seems like it's the most popular, um, it's the most mellow, and it has what appears to be the most mass sand that isn't covered in grass right now. Um, I don't know if that's always the case, 
Um, but I, I do kind of think right now that this um, beach right here is becoming my favorite beach. However, it is the furthest one from the campground, unfortunately. There is another campground that I can see over here um, that doesn't appear to have all the like the little rails going around it. I really like that other campground that was like right on that little beach. I think if uh, the ocean wasn't quite so windy and, and so um, crazy today, um, that beach would be the go-to. Um, but today, definitely, um, since the waves are out there, um, I think that this would be the most mellow one. They do have this little jetty here behind me. Is the um, Beyond um, the Old Bridge. And then there's the new bridge right here to give you kind of an idea. The other nice thing about being here is the little bay is here with the concession stand with all the rentals and the food and stuff. So that's really nice. They have a humongous parking lot here, but it does also mean that you're going to be hauling your stuff from the campground to here if you're camping. Hey guys, so while we were here in the Keys, there was all kinds of activities that we did. Um, obviously, we went to Key West because that's, you know, you don't go really to the Keys without going to Key West. Um, but it is a bit of a drive to keep that in mind. It's like an hour from here. Then we also um, went snorkeling right off Marathon. Um, I, I think it was like maybe a hundred bucks or something. It, it was not terribly expensive. And the boat takes you out. You get like two hours at the Sombrero uh, Lighthouse. And then, which is a reef that's like 30 minutes away. And they take you back to Marathon. And Marathon is just, it's like 10 minutes from the campground. It's, it's really, really close. Then uh, we also went saltwater fishing and they supply everything, basically just show up with like water and suntan lotion. And they tell you, they even give you a little tutorial on what to do and they have different types of fishing rigs set up. Um, it's not deep sea fishing, it's just saltwater fishing um, with like a regular fishing pole. They bait it for you, they take the fish off for you, they fillet it for you, they pretty much um, full service everything. And then afterwards they split the fish uh, across the whole boat. So everybody takes home a little fish if you want it. And if you don't cook fish or do you, you're not, you're not um, here with a camper or something, um, all the restaurants in the area will cook your fish for you um, for a small fee, so you can always do that um, if you want. Um, then, while we were here, we went to all kinds of different bars, um, so that was cool too, and obviously you have your beach day, and um, depending on if you're here at uh, Bahia, Bahia Honda, um, or if you want to run down to Curry Hammock, there's all kinds of different places to paddleboard, if you have a paddleboard or a kayak, there's malgroves, there, it's just so much, the list is so long. Um, we, we went to um, Pigeon Key, which is a, um, a working camp, and we learned all about the railroads and the establishment of Florida, Florida, which um, I can throw some pictures um, on a little train. That was really cool. Wow, um, we're gonna go on a sunset cruise, and we have not done that yet, um, but that's another thing that you can do while you're in the area. Um, it's just one thing after another, and most of these things are not terribly expensive, um, for fairly reasonably priced. And uh, most of them you can catch right on a marathon, which is just 10 minutes out of um, Bahia Honda or um, Curry Hammock, depending on where you're camping at. Um, so just lots and lots of cool things that you can do um, with just just staying here, not having to, to really drive that far um, at all. So yeah, way, way super cool. Um, but remember, um, book your stuff ahead, stuff ahead of time if you can. The Dry Two Torgas specifically, I think, books about a month out. Um, all the other stuff, I was able to get reservations within a couple days, so um, that would be the, the big one. I want to um, come down to Curry Hammock or I want to come down to Kia um, Honda, which is where we, this video is featuring. Basically, um, 11 plus months in advance, you need to start sur surfing the website for reservations um, in Florida State Parks, figure out which sites your camper can fit in, make a list on a little notepad or something. Once you figure out which sites you can um, get into, then pretty much every single morning um, at like 7.55, you wanna log into Florida State Park Reservation System and look, um, they have a little kind of grid thing where you pick the sites and figure out which of those sites on that list is gonna come available that day. Um, they let you book 11 months in advance on the day. So like if you wanna come say um, November 15th, then that means it's like January 15th, you would be December 15th, I don't know, 11 months beforehand on the day, like. If you want to come on the 15th and it's going to be the 15th. On the day, um, at 8 a.m., they open the booking and there'll be 50 people like clicking the button at the same time. Most likely, you're not going to get the site when you went um, on first try. Um, it took me three weeks doing this to get the site, but we got a two week booking. Um, the, another person I know that has a two week booking um, at Curry Gamut and the same for Kia um, Honda, it took me two months. 
Um, I know a lot of people that I've spoken to that have tried this three or four years in a row and they could not get a, a site anywhere within multiple months time frame of when they wanted it. So very frustrating. Um, the other thing you can do is cancellations. There's a little like reminder on the website you can click on and then it will like send you an email or something telling you there was a cancellation and then you can try to quickly ninja it and try to get in there and grab it. Um, I've seen a couple of the sites near us work from cancellations, but it's like every day there's a different person at a site. And you know, I spoke to them and they're like, well, we're here for two days, we're in that other site for one day, and then we're over at the other state park for another day. Wow, cancellations, yeah, really, really rough trying to go that route. Um, you, the best way is like 11 months in advance and you can plan it out, you know, like I said, a while before that. Go through everything with single site, figure out which ones are the ones that you want, and then once you, think you know that, then you just really, really try to, to get in there at 8 o'clock in the 21st thing. And it has to be right at 8, if it's like 8.05, don't even bother with looking at the site because um, it books up like immediately, like the very second that you can click the button, it books. So.